This video was brought to you by Patreon. Hey you, how's it going? My name is Ruby Price and welcome to a week ago. I feel like I should probably start. I woke up at the time that I intended to wake up today. Which is a positive, because I'm trying to get into a more productive sleeping pattern and yeah, if that means that I've got to wake up, spend an hour in bed, then get out of bed, I'll take it. So plans for this week. First things first, vlog. Because last week got away from me. Also tonight I'm doing a live stream, Monday Night Rubes, to make up for not doing one last week. Seems to be a theme. Um, and also, and Thursday I've got a Sonic Workshops workshop booked with Ian Coulson, who I have had on my podcast, and he's also probably one of the reasons as to why I'm as into videography as I am. Um, so that's good. I figured, you know, if it's possible to, you know, have a workshop with the person who, you know, is one of my biggest influences in the videography, music videography industry, why shouldn't I take that opportunity? So, yeah, I've got that booked. Um, and also just generally piss off some turfs, because by merely existing I piss off turfs, and a pissed off turf is a good turf. Actually, a silent pissed off turf is a good turf, but unfortunately they insist on not being silent. That's the third time I've said that, because my, uh, my SD card and my camera's been weird. Um, so I might need to get a new SD. There's also some, you know, video plans at some point and just general content creation on the agenda. It's the return of the beast from the east. Pasta la pasta. I figured I should probably have some lunch since, you know, I'm going to be live streaming at dinner time. Okay, so if you're a Pokemon fan, I have an album to recommend to you. And it's called uh, Pokey and Chill. It's by Mickle and Game Chops. A lo-fi electronic um, album that has, you know, done loads of Pokemon songs. And I've been listening to it for the last 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Um, with headphones in, because I'm not a monster. And wow, it's good. It's really good. If you're a fan of any of the Pokemon music from any of the games, or even if you just like music that's lo-fi and electronic, this is an album for you to listen to. It's really, really good. I was recommended it on Twitter, and yeah, it's, it's worth passing on a recommendation to. Yeah. Also, there's one hour till my stream. Um, as you can see, I actually got ready. I got, I put makeup on. I feel good. Yeah. So I hope that, you know, the stream can have the same positive energy that I felt whilst getting ready because, you know, I feel good about the way that I'm looking at the minute for once. Um, and I'm ready to, ready to go in an hour. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I've got one last song to go on this album. I'm gonna start it now. Did you set up yet? Yeah. It's not in my subs. It normally is. Who's ready for a live stream? Seriously, who? I always get scared that like there's gonna be nobody. <laughs> no one turns up. Like, you know, it'll be seven o'clock bang on and there'll be nobody waiting. Hey you, how's it going? My name is Ruby Price and welcome to Monday Night Rubes and I've put effort into my makeup tonight so if people don't show up I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, how is everybody doing? It's nice to see some people in. Hey Ali. Hey party people as well. Evening Mel. Hey Willow. That's just my name but hey Willow. That was a really fun live stream. Thank you to everyone who turned up. I even enjoyed ranting about the transphobes. Which, believe me, it was necessary. But yeah, I genuinely had a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for coming, if you did. And 
I'll hopefully catch you on the next one. I need some food. Josh is making jambalaya. Jambalaya. That never isn't fun to say. Not carbon based life forms. Today I've got an appointment with my universal credit. Well, with my new universal credit work coach because I've been using the service now for I think it's 13 weeks that they said um, at the time. I've been using it for an extended period of time and this work coach is apparently more suited to, you know, people who've been out of employment for a long time. Right, my appointment's very soon. 20 minutes later, 10 minutes after my appointment's supposed to have been. Still waiting. There are so many other things that I could be doing, which I probably wouldn't be doing anyway. Let's be honest. But also, you know, I could have been doing those things. I started planning a video yesterday. It's gonna be an interesting one. That is provided I actually, you know, get it done. But, um, yeah, it's a video that I've been thinking about for a couple of years now. And it's a video that, you know, is tackling a very divisive question. I think people who watch my videos normally will like it. I think some people who don't watch my videos normally could like it as well. But there's also the potential that people who don't like, people who don't watch my videos a lot could also not like it. And it's certainly going to piss off some turfs. It was 25 minutes past 11. I was like, why haven't they called yet? So I went online and checked. My appointment's definitely on a Tuesday. And it's definitely at 11 a.m. in February. But it's in two weeks. Well now it's just wasting my own time. Ah, so I did some job stuff. I played F1 2020 for the first time in over a week. Um, and I got out of a subscription that I didn't mean to be subscribed to because I can't say no to people at the door. <laughs> but I got out of it, uh, which was good. So yeah, now I'm just reheating some jambalaya. Jambalaya. Josh made so much last night that it was like, all right, cool. Guess we're having leftovers for tea tomorrow. And we are. I just felt like this needed documenting. I'm out of bed before 9 a.m. And I don't have a package to wait for. I just woke up and I'm awake. And there's nothing more to it. I tell you what, I was super rubes this morning. Obviously because I woke up early, um, I meant for, you know, a very rare occasion, the bin men um, were actually being active around whilst I was around and I was like, oh, bollocks, we forgot to put the bin out because I saw them going past and I was like, oh, missed them. But then I realised they were coming back along the street because basically what they do is they reverse down and then they drive out because it's a very tight area. Um, I was like, Ooh, they're right next door. Like, they're coming this way. I've got time. Do I have time to get the bin down there? And I did. Just, they were in the neighbour's garden by the time I made it to the bottom of the garden. And whew, I felt good about that. Because I was like, at least I've done something now. Um, but yeah, I've spent this morning just working on one of the covers for this EP. And finishing off a couple of YouTube videos that I missed over the weekend because... I spent the last couple of weeks just re-watching Nerdcube's Fallout series because when I was ill I just kind of wanted something that I'd already seen but you know there was a lot of so that you know I'd have something to keep watching um so I put that on and I got invested to the point where it's literally been on almost all the time since then 70 something episode 73 I think it is I've just finished it last night, so I'm finally starting on my Watch Later playlist, which has been neglected since I was ill. There's a couple of videos to work through. 
but on the cover front, it is sounding good. Um, it's in a, it's a genre that I'm not normally like, you know, involved with, and that's, you know, why it's interesting because I'm obviously working, um, with vocals that someone else did, but I'm also trying to like appropriate it, cancelled, um, in a way that you know, sounds like a song that I could do. So I'm kind of mixing up styles and stuff and doing unusual things that I wouldn't normally do with my instrumentation. So, yeah, we're gonna find out how that goes when other people listen to it. Two more covers then, unless I manage to come up with an original by the deadline, which is the end of February. Around the end of February. I don't know, I've lost the date now. Gals on food duty tonight, I'm making a bolognese. And yeah. Um, Looking forward to it. This one's got broccoli in. Does that make it a broccanese? The jury's still out on that one. But yeah. So last night's bolognese wasn't the best bolognese I've ever made but it was still pretty good so I'll take it. Even chucked in different ingredients this time around. But yeah, you know. What it will be good as is on toast because for some reason like the bolognese that I've been making just works really well on toast the day after. Which is great because it means that that's what I'm having for is 11.30 breakfast, or is it brunch? I'm gonna say breakfast. Yeah, today's like the first day in ages that I've gotten out of bed after 10 o'clock. It feels weird. So in what was probably only a matter of time, uh, Gina Carano has been like, well, she hasn't been fired, she just hasn't had her contract renewed um, after, if you don't know, for context, um, Gina Carano played, um, what was she? She was like part of the Republic, she was a Republic Ranger, that's what she was, um, in uh, Star Wars Mandalorian and she's had a problematic um, social media presence for a while. To the extent that before the second season of The Mandalorian came out, um, there were a lot of people calling for boycotts and for her to be dropped. So this is less a firing and more a Disney declaring their intentions to not rehire her. Just, you know, because there is a distinction. Um, there is a distinction and that's important. So. The social media altercation that Disney are using as their leverage for this is uh, Gina saying on Instagram that to be a Republican living um, today is the same as being a Jew in Nazi Germany and the Holocaust. And one, that's an argument of similar um, comparisons that gets thrown around a lot. But the difference is, this is, you know, someone hired by Disney, you know, spreading that message along with all of the previous things, um, such as, you know, endorsing the Capitol Hill riot riots, uh, being somewhat transphobic, and a lot of other things that, you know, when you put them all together in context, just signify someone that's pretty, ban pretty bad for a brand who's modern day image is one of, you know, family entertainment and, you know, there's a lot of people saying that this is, you know, cancel culture gone too far and by a lot of people, I'm, you know who I mean, um, idiot basically, but one, this isn't cancel culture, this is Disney choosing not to be associated any further with someone who, you know, is comparing being a Republican under a Democratic government as being as bad as the Holocaust. I 
and also, yeah, they do have every right to choose to not hire her going forward. Good job, Lucasfilm. You did something right. <sighs> yeah. You'd think I'm filming a video looking this, you know, awesome. Um, but no, just fancied getting dressed properly today. You know, after the sleeping in and everything else, all I needed was just a bit of glamour. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with this eye makeup. Yeah. Anyway, um, what am I doing? I'm making a brew, I'm doing job stuff, and I'm just not doing that much, really. No. I'm probably going to start planning the next stage of the music challenge because I've got two more songs for this EP that need doing, and I haven't decided what songs they're going to be yet, so yeah. Oh man, you know when the night gets away from you? Yeah. Been playing Fallout all night. It's been really fun. I, I've nearly finished the main story part, actually. I mean the last third. Yeah. So, in the morning, well, not the morning, in the afternoon, but it might feel like the morning. <laughs> um, in the afternoon tomorrow, I have got my Sonic workshop with Ian Coulson. Um, which I'm really looking forward to. He sent me a message earlier, you know, like asking if there's anything specifically that I wanted to work on and I was like, yeah, colour grading mostly. Just, you know, get better at videography and stuff because, yeah, you can never be too bad. You can never be too good at videography. So, yeah. But mostly colour grading. That's something that I would really like to work on. So I just got paid for my health and safety video that I made. Um, which is good, but it's also bad because because of how much money I've earned this month, the amount of universal credit I get um, at the start of next month is going to be significantly down because it works. So that, you know, the more I earn, the less they give, the less of a percentage of the total they give me um, up to a certain point when they just don't give me anything. So that means I've got to keep hold of this money for as long as possible, which is always a challenge. I should be okay. I hope. Anyway, uh, on the topic of videography, I've got my Sonic Workshop with Ian Coulson today, so yeah. I'm going to have some breakfast and a copious amount of caffeine and I'm going to get ready. That was really helpful. Yeah. Literally just got off, like, you know, this minute. Um, but yeah. I've <sighs> learnt a lot. And hopefully I will start to put that into practice at some point. <laughs> anyway, so, today, um, now that that's done, uh, more job stuff, and yeah. Let's get ready for the weekend. Does it matter? They're all weekends, but yeah, awesome. Sonic workshops, definitely a good thing. If, you know, someone is there, f like, to teach you the thing. If you want to get into videography, Ian is definitely someone to speak to. Um, so, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check him out. It's definitely worth it. So, I've been watching last night's, or yesterday's NXT, some shocking decisions in terms of where the matches went. Honestly. There were like three matches in a row where the winner was not the winner that deserved to be. And then it ended with a match that was a complete subversion of my expectations. It was crazy. Like, I've been thinking, because there's a current storyline going on, and I was like, oh, maybe this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. And them not winning this match has completely subverted that because now that storyline can't happen and it's like, you were setting it up for that storyline. Yeah. Right, I've got a Spider-Man game to try and finish because as soon as we finish this we can start playing Miles Morales and yeah, it's, it's, I've just, I've never finished a Spider-Man campaign before and 
you know, I wanted to finish it before we started playing the sequel. Here's a sequel. Yeah. Like a semi sequel. I keep calling it the Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 of Spider Man games because that was basically just an expansion pack for Rollercoaster Tycoon 1. But it was a very good expansion pack. It's taken two years of having owned the game, but I've finally finished the story of Spider Man. So we've just started watching It's a Sin. It's, it's really good. Yeah, uh, I got a little bit distracted when I saw the Star and Garter in Manchester in the background. I was like, oh shit, yeah, this is, this isn't based in London. <laughs> At least if it is, they're using, Man they're using the Manchester as like the place it's at. Um, I haven't quite paid attention to that part, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I got distracted because I was like, I did an interview in there. <laughs> I went to a gig. But yeah, it's a really good show. I kind of forgot that Neil Patrick Harris was that good an actor. Um, and I didn't realise that Ollie Alexander was a good actor. <laughs> or an actor. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna watch the second episode. Magic. I nearly milled Josh's deck. He had three cards left in his library. But then Ian gave him a mercy killing. And then I won the next turn. Yeah, that was that was fun. That deck was brutal. So we watched the second episode of It's a Sin last night before playing some magic. Yeah, it's really, really good. It flips between being whimsical and dark, like on the drop of a hat. But I think that works really well for it. Because it's obviously set in a time that was very whimsical and dark. So, yeah, uh, very much recommend. Best game ever. When you don't have any champagne flutes, you've got to use Jack Daniel's glasses. <laughs> so I got particularly tipsy on Carver. That that was a bottle that I got for uh, Christmas, actually. But it's just kind of kept being pushed back to when we use it. It was like, oh, Valentine's Day. Let's open it on Valentine's Day. But yeah, we just watched 10 Things I Hate About You. I feel if there's one day where you can get away with watching, you know, 10 Things I Hate About You, it's Valentine's Day, it's that kind of film, but yeah. Huh. But, on that note, uh, I'm going to call that a week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do all that generic YouTube stuff. Like, share, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. As always, I've been Ruby Price, and I shall see you a week ago. Adios. Bye.